All right, I have a uh, Cavers Cavif lock like that. It's got um, <clears throat> it's got six uh, sides to it, um, and I'll be picking this and uh, at the same time participating in Panda Frog's monthly giveaway, um, where he wants us to tell some dad jokes while we pick our lock. Uh, in any case, this lock has uh, five push pin sides to it. And then it has this top bitted area, kind of like a pin tumbler, where it's got three uh, three pins. So if you were to pick this, you'd probably, if it, let's say it's fully locked like this, you'd need to pick it at 360 and then 360 again, right, to fully get it. That just because it's in, in this type of deadbolt. If it was in the other deadbolt system, maybe you only need to do 360. Um, but you have to pick it through six positions. So that would be two full rotations would be 12 positions of picking. Of course, we won't do that. What we'll do is we'll just pick it um, one position and then show it. Uh, you can tell the position right now is right there. There is a um, up top there. Hopefully you can see there's pin sticking down. So that's the pin tumbler side that's only on one side of the key, which is uh, these pins right here. So once those are picked, they'll be in the next position, either left or right. And then that's how you know it'll be picked. That's at, that's at least how we'll do it here. So we're not sitting here for an hour going through all 12 positions, repeating the same thing over and over. Actually, not quite repeating the same thing over, repeating less over and over. Because once you get it past one position, the driver pin won't be able to pick, push on those pin tumblers, right? Um, and the uh, pin tumbler drivers aren't going to be pushing the pin out. So you never need to pick this top chamber except when the, the when the, the key pins are at the top. And you'll never need to pick the key pins if they're in any of the other chambers, right? So that's two less chambers you have to pick at minimum. It's probably even more or less that you have to, there's probably even less that you have to pick as you go around. But in any case, here I have a, I made a, a music wire pick and I'll stick that in the bottom there. It can get a little stuck on the, the outer housing here, um, at which point then you can just, you can rotate with the, the pick and do whatever you need to do. But that usually only gets stuck after it's picked open. So in any case, we'll go counterclockwise and we'll check the pin tumblers first. All right, first one's not binding. All right, second pin feels like it's binding. All right, gotta click out of that. Third pin, uh, click, and I think we're open. Indeed, we're open. So hopefully you can see that I'm turning the inside there, right? And if I keep going, I can move the, I can move the bolt. You see that bolt moving there? So if I kept going, I can move the bolt. So, well, why didn't I have to pick it 12 times? I'm gonna lock it back up again. There we go. Why don't I have to pick it 12 times? Well, this is the interior side of the lock. So the interior side only has the top three pins. Now we'll go on to the real meat, the exterior side. So the exterior side is the fully populated side that has all the stuff. So to save on production costs and whatever, the interior, you know, you're inside the house, you don't need to protect yourself from going out, right? Um, it only has the three top pins just to keep it from moving freely. So on the exterior side, we got fully populated. Again, same key. You know, does the same thing, and you'll approach it the same way. Put that guy in there. He will block that bottom pin a little bit, but um, you can actually work your way around this enough. So we'll start at the top again. All right, first pin is jiggling. Second pin's binding. Click out of that. Third pin. A little click out of that. Go back to the first pin again. Binding and click out of that. I felt a little bit of plug movement. So I'm thinking that that uh, top is picked. So now let's start pushing on some of these pins here. Um, this left one is springy like that. Bottom left. I have no light pointing down this. Actually, you know what? I'm going to bring a light in because I can't actually see the, uh, the pins otherwise. So let's see if I can get this light on here and not mess with the camera too much. All right. All right, second one. Feels like it's binding. Got a little click out of it and now it's springy. Top left, I'll go back to the top left again, see if that caused that any change in the top left. It did. Got a click out of it, now it's springy. 
top right. So these ones that I'm pushing, they have false gates in them. And if you end up on a false gate, then that will uh, eventually cause your pick, uh, your pin to bind. And then you need to push on it. I'm trying to get around the bottom to get on the pin, but I'm it's right behind where the music bar is. All right, I pushed that, now it's springy. And um, otherwise they're gonna act like tapers. So you're gonna go around feeling the springiness and you'll get to one that just barely binds. And when you tap on it, it goes back to being springy. So it just moved, like I just barely tapped that one and I actually felt things move a little bit. And that means that some other pin now is barely binding. And you work your way back and forth between there, that bottom one. Uh, that left, bottom left felt like it was stuck just a little bit. Top left one feels like it's stuck a little bit. Push it a little bit and it's springy again. So they're, they're acting like tapered pins. Maybe they are tapered pins. I'm unable, I've been unable to see inside um, because, and we'll probably, if we have time, we'll take apart the whole lock housing. But um, the thing is that once you get down to the actual lock cylinder, it's uh, crimped closed. So I was unable to take it apart. All right, this bottom right one seems like it's binding. It's not moving at all. I'm gonna push on it. All right, it went down a little bit, but still not springy. So I think this bottom right one is probably in a false gate. So I'm gonna push it, try to get it out of the false gate. And now we're back to another gate where it's springy. Check the top right one. Oh, is the top right one binding? So I'm getting a little lucky. Oh no, all right, it clicked a little bit and now it's springy. Bottom right, oh, bottom right's not sp not springy, it's still, I'm gonna push down even more. It's not springy for sure. There we go. Okay, now it's definitely springy. Top right, it's binding again, interesting. All right, now it's springy. Top left, very little movement, very little spring, but it's still springy, so we'll leave it alone. Bottom left. If I'm actually on the pin, it's not moving. Double check where I'm at. It's not moving. It's definitely binding pretty tight. So I'm gonna push down. Okay, there is some spring there. I'm gonna leave that alone. Look at the one underneath. Springy, top left. Sp has spring to it. Spring to it, top right. All right, so dad joke. One that's always just stuck in my head from the early 90s. I We had this radio show that we shared on cassette tape with my friends. And it, ha it had John Cleese in it and, you know, from Faulty Towers and Monty Python. And I don't know why this, this joke is always stuck in my head, but uh, there were these two peanuts walking down the road. And one was a salted peanut. Oh. Yeah, I know. It's a, it's a hilarious joke. I know because I tell my kids I'm the funniest dad they've ever had, so I know it's funny. All right, bottom left might be binding, but let me check the top left. Top left is a little bit springy, bottom left is not moving. So I'm gonna go ahead and push the bottom left down. It went down a little, but it's still not springy, so I think that's in a false gate. So we'll try to get that all the way down. You have to push these pretty hard, and you're risking overset, so you wanna try to control yourself a little bit while you do it. There we go. Went down, but it's still binding. Went down more, and now it's springy. So that's good. Top left. Top left is binding. I think uh, top left probably dropped while I was pushing the bottom left. Because you get a little counter, I guess, as you're pushing out of the false gate. So the top left is binding. There we go. Click, and back to springy. Top right. Very springy. Bottom right. Binding. Okay, it was just like, kind of like taper, now it's springy. Top right, springy, bottom. Let's see if the bottom's like that. That was my best dad joke because the other ones are kind of dumb. Um, like, uh, okay, I gotta click out of the bottom. Like, um, you know, there's this new dating service in Prague called Checkmate. Yeah, I don't know, I'll stop. Um, all right, bottom. All right, this bottom left is definitely springy. Top left, springy. Top right, springy. Bottom right, very light spring on it, but it's definitely springy. Bottom left, top left, top right. 
All right, so the top right and top left don't feel like they're taking part in the taper action. Top left is, top left is really taking part. It's binding pretty hard actually. Hmm. Make sure I'm on the actual, nope, there's the pin. I was pushing on the warding up here. So very easy to accidentally push on the warding. You gotta go down and there's the pin springy. Bottom left is springy. Bottom springy. Bottom right. Bottom right has such a light spring to it. It's hard to, to tell with the bottom right one. Bottom. And so I thought this would be a good one to fit the dad jokes in because it's a lot of just going around, poking until you settle them down into the into a gate. and just a lot of rep repetition as you work them down into a gate. Once we get it open one step, um, it gets a lot easier until you make a full 360. Um, and I'll demonstrate that by, once we pick it one step, I'll have to unpick it a step, which unpicking it a step or picking a step further is gonna be exactly the same. So I'll demonstrate that and that'd be basically be this equivalent to picking it two positions. I have to pick it back one because the key is not going to work with it uh, advanced one step. All right, this bottom right one definitely seems to be the binder. So I'm just gonna work my way around maybe one or two more times. Make sure. Yeah, that bottom right one is starting to not move at all. Yep, not moving at all, so I'm gonna go ahead and push the bottom right. Ooh, not moving at all. Does it have to go down further? Kind of scared, but let's go ahead and take it, see if we can take it down further. There we go, went down further. Top right, top right. Okay, springy bottom, springy bottom left, top left, top right, bottom right. All right, I, I, every time I touch that bottom right, I'm feeling a lot of plug movement. Top right, bottom right. Okay, not that time. So at this point, it could be that my tensioner is stuck on the outer wall. I'll test for that in a second. And maybe re reposition that tensioner a little. Okay, so I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab it with my pick and give tension, and then I'll take the bottom off, and re I move the bottom a little bit, the tensioner a little bit. Oh, got even more movement when I tap that bottom pin. So it must be close. There's probably one more gate to do, or something like that. Oh, a little bit more movement when I touch the bottom right. Top right feels like it's binding. We'll go around one more time before we Top left is very little movement. Bottom left is very little movement. Bottom very little movement. Bottom right very little movement. Top right no movement at all. So this top right is our binder. It went down some and and still is not springy. So it's got a, it's definitely in its false gate. Push it down one. Very little bit of spring to it. We might be open. Let's check. No, it doesn't appear to be. Could be this top right needs to go down one more. Let's make one circuit. Little spring, little spring on the bottom, little spring, bottom right, little spring, top right, no spring. Down a little bit more on the top right. There we go. And I think that's open. Indeed. So go ahead and stick our pick in one of these slots and give it some turn. There we go. You heard another click. And if we look inside here, you can now see that we've rotated it left. So we got to look at this side here. You can see that the, the uh, pins for the pin tumbler are now over here instead of up here. So if I can show that without. Can you see the, there's a pin right here, the pin tumbler. Hopefully you can see that. You can also see that uh, maybe you can see down on the bottom right here a little bit of damage to the inside from where the tensioner has been. Whereas this bottom here is pretty pristine. I don't know if you can see all that, but in any case, it's picked one position. 
And what we'll do is we'll unpick it one position. So we'll go put the tensioner down the bottom and we'll go to the left and you'll see there are no, up top there, there's no pins because they're over here. You hear the three of them? One, two, three. Um, and now you just need to push, you wouldn't need to push on this one. See, it doesn't go anywhere because they're the springs are pushing down from top. There's no, no spring from the back. Top right, all right, that gave us a little click and a little bit of plug rotation. Bottom right, springy, bottom, springy, bottom left, springy. Uh, this one, we can't push because they're, they're pin, pin tumbler pins. Top right, seems to be our binder. Okay, that's free. Bottom left, free, bottom right, seems to be binding. No. Maybe bottom. Bottom feels free. Bottom left feels free. Top right is springy. Bottom right's our binder. Where it was? There we go. Bottom right is now springy. Top right springy. Bottom left is springy. Bottom very springy. I'm slipping off with the tensioner, so let's go ahead and put the pick in to get tension. It's a hard time seeing. Put the tension back on the bottom. There we go. Bottom left, got some plug rotation when I pushed on that. Bottom left is fine. I mean, bottom right gave plug rotation. Bottom now feels like our binder. Click out of that, springy. Bottom left, binder, springy. Bottom right. Springy, top right, spring, bottom, free, free, spring, a little bit of spring on the top right, keep going, oh, got a, a little bit more plug rotation when I push the bottom, bottom left is springy, bottom right springy, springy, check the bottom again, bottom left, bottom is it feels like it's binding. Oh, I might have pushed too far. I, I might have lost everything actually doing that. Hmm. Bottom springy. I have a feeling that I keep getting this tensioner stuck. I might give up on this in a second and do it off camera, but it should be a lot easier. I just don't want to waste a ton of time. Why does it seem like it's open when I do that? I'm holding the tension with my pick. Going back in autumn. Okay, that's definitely not binding on the uh, outer housing outer housing now on the bottom. That bottom one feels like a binder. So does the top, oh, that's the wording on the top right. Bottom one, binder. I know I'm, I'm probably crowding the uh, camera now. Bottom is loose. And then I touch the left and I get a lot of rotation and then the bottom gets all tight again. Okay, I went down another another um, step on the, another gate on the bottom one went down. But I think that was too far. Because now it feels like it's binding again. All right, let's see if we can go down another gate. No. All right, we'll give up for now. I don't want to waste a ton of time. Um, and I'll show the key again. Doesn't fit, All right? Because that's been advanced to position. It's like I can't get the key in. Um, but we'll go ahead and I wanted to spend a little time. If I have time afterwards, maybe I'll try it some more. But I did want to get to looking inside a little bit first. So let's move that light out the way. Okay, 
should be auto focusing right now. All right. On here, I noticed. Um, oh, maybe I haven't tried. I have not tried to take this one apart. Maybe it does come apart. I was playing with another lock, so maybe this one does come apart. Let's see. I, I was playing with. What was I playing with? That I, I had taken the outer housing off, and then I noticed that the inside's crimped. But I never tried taking this one apart. Now that I now that I'm looking at it, because the other one had like three screws on top. I'm like, where are the, the screws on top? They're not on the top, so they're on the bottom here. And I didn't bring out a pinning tray because of this, so I might have to run and grab one if we can take it all the way apart. So there's the top and the bottom. All right, cool. That comes out. I won't mess. What is this? Uh, I won't mess with the rest of that. That's because that's got the interior lock, which is not of much interest. It's this exterior that's interesting. What is this? All right. We got four, we got a uh, we got four in here. I'm gonna have to go get other tools too. I only brought out the one screwdriver, and I can see that that's not gonna fit in, in there. So let's go ahead and take these four out. This one looks like it had been crimped to keep the screw from un being unscrewed, but maybe not because it came undone okay. Actually, all of them look like that. It looks like they've been punched to keep the screw from unscrewing. But you can break right through it with the screwdriver. So as soon as I start unscrewing, that little crimp just breaks off. So maybe this is a good thing. Let's see. Get that off. Yeah, okay. So far, so good. Oh, then I could have just, I could have been picking it like this without the housing. Oh, that back whole piece fell off. So it looks like that uh, just goes into that slot there to turn the, turn that. Um, okay, well, it's got this, but it's also got this pin, which is worrying me. I think this pin might s stop everything. Um, Trying to see if that that if that thing on the inside somehow comes out. This piece here. I don't know. Let's see if this unscrews. Indeed, it does. That could be a good thing. That came off. I don't know. No, that's that's. I can see that that. Is it not focusing? That that piece is pushed in, so it's crimped in there. So I'd need to at least drill that out, and then whatever this is might be holding stuff. So I don't think we're going to get lucky with this, unfortunately. No, it doesn't look like it. So we'll go ahead and bring this back, put this guy back on here, and spend the last six or so minutes to see if we can get Lucky trying to unpick it. All right. Let's go ahead and try to unpick it again. Put that guy there. Start poking. It's not in there. See, I only need to work, mess with four. All right, the top right is binding. Bottom right binding. Bottom. No. Bottom left. No. Okay, got a, more movement touching the bottom right. Bottom now. Binding, bottom left. A little bit of binding, but mainly the bottom one feels like it's binding. Yep, no springiness at all on the bottom. Click out of that. Bottom right. Top right. Bottom left. Bottom left is our binder. Click out of that, and there we go. Back to normal. We should be able to use the key at this point. Indeed, there we go. So, uh, that is the Cavers Kevith. And uh, go check out Panda Frog. He always has good giveaways going on. Uh, thank you. Uh, bye.